Hey guys, this is Dave. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the topping E70 desktop deck. I also have the E70 Velvet, which I will be comparing it with later. It's not gonna be an extensive comparison because I do have a separate review coming out for that, but I will touch on a, a few points of comparison. Now the E70 is the second most expensive topping deck in the E-Series lineup and comes in at 349, while the E70 Velvet is the most expensive in the E-Series at 449. And then a while back, I did review the E50. That one was priced at 269. And then more recently, the E32, which is the least expensive in the E-Series, that one comes in at 149. As for what's included in the box, you have the E70, of course. It also comes with a remote, a Bluetooth antenna, a power cable, which the power cable actually plugs directly into your wall because the E70 has an integrated power supply, which means that's good. It means you're gonna have nice, clean power. It also comes with a type A to type B USB cable. Okay, let's talk about the design and specifications. The design is nice. It comes in two color options, black and silver. It follows the same design language as the other devices in the E-Series lineup, the E30, E32, the E50. It has a metal chassis with a glass front, and there is also a little bit of glass on the face of the volume knob. I do like the simple approach they took. I think the red accent around the volume knob is a nice touch. As for displays, buttons, knobs, inputs, and outputs, on the front we have a touch sensitive power button that also doubles as an input selector. We also have a volume control that if you push also doubles as a selector button and allows you to access certain areas of the menu. So both of the buttons on the front are multi-functional, basically. There's also an LCD screen that displays your menu and volume levels. On the back, you have stereo balanced XLR outputs. Right next to those are the RCA stereo outputs. Then we have our coaxial, optical, USB, and Bluetooth inputs. It also has a 12 volt trigger, power connector, and the main power toggle. Now, as for the internals of the E70, it uses the ES9028 Pro 32-bit Hyperstream 2 DAC chip. The E70 Velvet uses the AKM4499EX. Now, one thing that's interesting about this 9028 Pro is that it has a signal-to-noise ratio of 124 dBs, which is, from what I understand, one of the highest, if not the highest, the industry has to offer. Now, as for digital formats, the E70 does not support MQA, which may matter to some of you, it may not to others, it doesn't matter to me. It does, however, decode up to 32-bit PCM and DSD-512, but only through the USB inputs. The optical and coaxial inputs will decode up to 24-bit PCM and DSD-64. When it comes to Bluetooth, the E70 has Bluetooth 5.1. It can decode pretty much all of the latest Bluetooth formats, including LDAC, Aptix HD, Aptix LL, SBC, and AAC. I also tested the Bluetooth range, basically just walking around my house with my phone, and I didn't have any problems at all. I didn't have any signal drops at all. Now, the E70 does have some other features that it offers as well, uh, including the ability to use the XLR and RCA outputs simultaneously, or you can, of course, opt to use only one set of outputs at a time. It also has several different filters. Um, and I, of course, tested them. I didn't notice a big difference. Most of my testing was just using the stock filter. Okay, let's talk about the sound of the E70. As far as the overall sound presentation, I would consider the E70 to be basically neutral, but with some added warmth. And when I was doing a side-by-side -side comparison with the E70 Velvet, I noticed that the Velvet had slightly better dynamics and more treble energy than the E70. 
So next to the Velvet, the treble of the E70 sounded as though it had a more relaxed presentation. And while I wouldn't consider the E70 to be dry at all, next to the Velvet, it just sounded a little drier. So that difference in dynamics wasn't even something I really noticed at first until I did that side-by-side -side comparison with the Velvet. But something I did notice right away with the E70 was that the bass and mid-range frequencies were slightly more forward than the treble, but not by much. There was still adequate treble presence and energy, but the overall emphasis seemed to lean the direction of the mids and bass. I also should add that while the Velvet's additional dynamics seem to enhance its engaging qualities, the E70 has those same engaging characteristics only to a slightly lesser degree. So just to break it down a little more, starting with the bass, as far as the bass levels, again, they are slightly elevated in the sub bass and bass, and that elevation carries through into the mid bass and lower mids as well. And what that does is it adds just a little bit of warmth. The E70 does also have really good extension. It extends really well into the sub bass frequencies, so there isn't any roll off. And those sub bass frequencies kind of help to reinforce and support the rest of the bass frequencies, which again, I think that's one of the characteristics that is partly responsible for some of the engaging qualities of the E70 and for the Velvet. As for slam and impact, the E70 delivers that really confidently and there is ample amounts of punch and again, that sub bass rumble. Now the transition from the bass to the mid bass, while it again, it does have that extra presence and that touch of warmth, but it still maintains good, a good clean controlled presentation and it also provides plenty of mid bass texture and mid bass detail. And as for the overall bass quality, I would say it's excellent. And while it's not what I would consider top tier, it's very, very good at this price. I do, however, give the E70 Velvet a slight edge in terms of overall bass quality. As for mid range detail and clarity, the E70 is excellent. Instrument and vocal portrayal is very natural and very real. It has a really focused, full and rich kind of delivery. Now, one of the test tracks I use frequently is called Petia, which I believe that's how you pronounce it. Sorry if I got that wrong, but it's off of Go Go Penguin's Live From Studio 2 album. And it starts out fairly dynamically subdued and then builds really dramatically throughout the song. But at the beginning, the pianist is playing a very simple chord progression while the drummer is playing these rim shots and the bass player, he's actually playing with his bow, which he does a lot. He'll kind of switch back and forth between his bow and his fingers. But the rim shots the drummer's doing on the snare are full bodied and there's this weight and force to his strikes. And there of course are lots of factors that come into play from the tuning of his snare, the size of a stick, the type of microphone they use, a million other things. But that tactility and physicality that you hear reviewers and me talk about all the time is present when you listen to those rim strikes on that recording. And the E70 portrays it just beautifully. It's not perfect, but it's still really, really good. Now, another aspect of that recording that kind of stands out to me is the atmosphere and room reverb, which is something that you hear throughout the whole recording, but it's definitely more distinguishable during the beginning of that song, Petier, especially on those rim shots, but not just the rim shots. Also, the drummer starts to increase his dynamics in the hi-hat, and you can also hear it with his kick drum too. You can hear the reverb off of the walls with his hi-hat as he's increasing his dynamics and again with his kick, which is, again, this is kind of a segue into the treble, but but regarding the dynamics of this song, this is something that you hear a lot. If you're familiar with Go-Go Penguin's style, throughout their compositions frequently, there's this very deliberate and persistent infusion of dramatic dynamics in many of their songs. It'll start out very quiet and subdued, and the next thing you know, you're going a million miles an hour. 
And this ultra dynamic theme seems to be a consistent part of the formula in their compositions and has kind of become part of their signature sound. But anyways, back to the air and atmosphere and reverb. Sorry about that. I go off on these tangents, but that's a, it's a great album and they're just a great band. But so back to the air, atmosphere and reverb, of course, at this point, I should remind you that ultimately the performance of your gear, as always, is limited to, limited to the performance of your IEMs or headphones. That being said, the air or atmospheric qualities are usually found in the treble frequencies. And of course, the reverb frequencies are present not only in the treble, but in the mids as well. But the room reverb and that air, they all kind of work together to immerse you in whatever atmosphere the recording is trying to create. That's why I usually lump them together. And the E70 delivers that very well for the most part. I do have one nitpick I'll share in a minute, but it's, it's very good as far as treble extension. You can, again, this has really good upper treble presence. So it's got plenty of, of air. And it also reveals and brings out all of those small nuances and it allows you to hear almost all of the decay in the note so nothing sounds unfinished or too cut off and going back to those hi-hat strikes i referred to they sounded very very detailed and the hi-hat sounds really really natural now again like i said i do have one nitpick and that's with the treble levels compared to the mid and mids and bass levels like I mentioned in the beginning, the overall presentation is more mid-range and bass focused. And if you were only listening to the E70, didn't have anything else to compare it to, you may not even notice it. But of course I do, I have the Velvet and I did notice it. Now, lastly, I briefly wanna talk about technicalities. And again, at the end of the day, it all comes down to your IEMs or headphones. That being said, the E70, has excellent technical capabilities and performs really well at this price point. It has a wide and deep sound stage, excellent instrument separation and layering. It also gives you very precise imaging and that combined with its ability to deliver the air in those upper treble frequencies and that atmosphere, all of that works together beautifully to allow your IEMs or headphones to give you that engaging and immersive listening experience. So would I recommend the E70? Absolutely. Would I recommend upgrading to the Velvet if you already own the E70? No. And while I do think the Velvet delivers better sonic performance, I feel the E70 is still excellent. However, what I would recommend is if you're looking to purchase one or the other, spin the extra and spring for the Velvet. Again, speaking of which, I am going to be doing a full review of the Velvet, so keep an eye out for that. But again, going back to the E70, this is an excellent un unit. If you already own it, again, just keep it. Don't worry about upgrading because it is a great device. So that concludes my review of the Topping E70. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch. Please like this video, please share this video. And if you like Gazadio's content, please take a second and hit that subscribe button. I hope you guys have an awesome day.